Okay. Now we have our offensive coordinator, Chad Scott. No questions for Coach Scott. So, Chad, I guess the question is if, if Nico has to go uh, this week, differences, I mean, they both have similar skills but not identical. How, how different is the offense from Garrett to Nico? It shouldn't be any different. When, we, when he came in against Oklahoma State, unexpectedly, we didn't change anything. He just, we just kept the same. So he'll be in a good mental, mental uh, frame this week, and uh, we shouldn't change the game plan at all. Change the game plan. There's got to be a Garrett plan and an Eco plan, right? Because it's just right-handed, left-handed, all of that. Yeah, and no, in that regard, yeah, in, in that regard, as far as uh, you know, different rollouts and whatnot. But as, as far as like the concepts called and you know, limiting what we want to call, what we're capable of calling, uh, based on personnel, we won't limit that in that capacity. But as far as yeah, the right hand, left hand, we'll do some things differently. He runs the quarterback power pretty well. Is that? I'm, so, I'm sorry, Nico runs a quarterback power pretty yeah. well. Is that something that he does well that you can utilize? He, does. he, has, a, he has a good feel for it. And, uh, you know, that's something that we like to use in short yard situations. Typically, when you run a quarterback, you get everybody blocked. So he just got to do a great job seeing it right. And it, sh and it should be open. Schematically different, right? You're going back to the four man fronts to some of the unique things that you faced the last two weeks, or, right. or although they do multiple things, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Similar. Uh, Schematically, yeah, about the same uh, than what we saw. That's uh, similar to what we saw the first couple of weeks of the season. Uh, last two weeks, <clears throat> we faced a little bit more uh, odd fronts. This week, we'll face some odd, but it'd be more similar to what we see. We uh, faced the first couple of weeks of the season with a lot more even front balance looks. It's one thing when you have to switch to the, uh, another quarterback within a game. Like what Neil was saying, it's like, well, we won't know until probably later though this week definitely who's going to be the guy. What does that do for you guys preparation-wise in terms of not just the coaches but the players if there is a, a level of uncertainty during the week as to who might be the starter on Saturday? Yeah, well, well, if, if, yeah, like I say, like Coach said, it depends on how late we go. But as far as the preparation, both those guys typically go. You know, obviously Gary uh, in the past got more reps uh, when he was healthy. But uh, they've always gone, you know, so we do a great job of splitting reps. So in case something like this did happen, which is why when he came in the game, Oklahoma State really wasn't a drop off on the chemistry, of, you know, in terms of timing and throwing and perception and whatnot. What do you think caused there maybe being a drop off in the Kansas State game, though? Was it just the fact that the week wasn't as great, Neil you know, kind of alluded to, going yeah. into the game? Or For Nico? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. His, uh, he did not have a great week. It was just a mental deal. He didn't, he didn't have a good week. 100% agree. And so and he understands that. He knows that. Uh, but So today he was off to a good start, good good mind frame, good energy. So. It was bad timing to have to come in. <laughs> bad timing. <laughs> no doubt in the show. You know, I, I can't remember the instance last year, but there, Garrett, I think there was a game that you weren't sure if Garrett was going to go, but then – uh, later in the week, he he was good to go, and he ended up playing and playing pretty well. Mm -hmm. He's got that ability, right, to, to, to be able to uh, absorb things enough or know enough about what's going on that if you have to delay it, wait it, uh, and wait and it out, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but the, yeah, the one he got now is, you know, so it's more of a health thing with him now. Uh, last year was, you know, a different, different injury last year than what he's dealing with right now. So the point is, though, that he can – you can – he can absorb what you're doing if you have to wait. Oh, longer. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. He had another race, too, because that was the one time when the first quarter came out, had to have both ankles taped. I mean, he came out, he had really had a lot of like in game repair work, but still was able to come back in. Right, right. Like I so said, he, he, the kid's resilient. He's tough. He can do it. Uh, we were probably a little more worried last year uh, when that happened, uh, as far as, you know, Nico being ready a year ago. Than we are now, like uh, a a year a year later, Nico. You know, despite uh, outside last week, you know he's a much mature, much more mature player. Understands the offense has has grown tremendously, and uh, you know, in this ability to play, play the position at an effective level. So we feel good about both of them. It just seemed clear that Kansas State was going to pound Garrett. That was kind of their game plan. It just pounding. How do you how do you protect? I'm sh moving forward. How can you protect him? Is there anything you can do? To, to protect him a little bit when teams try to do that? 
We, just, we gotta be able to, you know, we gotta be able to throw the ball downfield. You know, you gotta be able to throw the ball downfield. They did a great job in coming in and stacking the box. And so we gotta be able to throw the ball downfield. We, we gotta be able to do that. We gotta be able to throw it. We gotta be able to catch it. We, we gotta be able to throw the ball downfield. You just yeah, you come to the table during the week with your ideas for things you can do offensively, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of it, especially for the quarterback, is relative to what he can do. Right. Um, do you do you have things with Nico that might be additional to the offense or strengths of his that might not be what you all do right now? Like there might be things that you can add because the quarterback can do this. Yeah, we can. Nico has he has a great feel for RPO, the RPO game, the run pass option game. Tremendous feel for it. He did it in high school at an elite level. Uh, and it's something too, uh, that to answer your question uh, a few seconds ago, we could do a, a great job of keeping hits off of him with that free hitter, that extra hitter that dips down in the box that we can't account for. With his ability to be able to throw RPOs off that guy at an effective level, at an efficient level, helps us out a lot. And those are some of the ideas that we bring to the table for him because he sees it really well, feels great about it, very confident in it, and can execute it at a high level for us. Which is what the, uh, the, one, the t one of the touchdown passes was in the Oklahoma State game. It was RPO. Yeah, in fact, it was RPO again the other night. He threw it, his last touchdown, it was RPO. So he sees those really well. So those are the things that will help us out offensively that can account for that free hit that we can't block. Does Garrett not get a lot of RPO calls? Because maybe that's not his best thing he does. Yeah, he doesn't see it as well as uh, Nico does. talked about him, so he'd move up to two if, if Nico has to go. What do you see out of Ryder? What, what are his strengths? Well, it, it, we don't see a lot out of him right now. He just does the Monday night football right now. Uh, so it's hard to see anything out of him right now. Uh, obviously, he doesn't have a lot of you know, in-game experience or whatnot. So, but we don't, I don't know a lot about you know, outside of what he does in Monday night football. Why 75 25? Is that usually how it works when you have your starter, your backup, or is it a little bit more than that? Or? Nah, we, 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 we go by 85 15. 85 yeah, 15. Yeah. So he's going to get some, but. He'll get some, but no, not a lot of. Right. Yeah. Mr. Brown kind of mentioned that he's confident Gene White's going to be able to play this week out of all the injured guys. Yeah. <clears throat> what, what would the running game look like without him overall? And how can you evaluate the running without, game? Without him, a lot of CJ Dunks. <laughs> Right. I mean, <laughs> Major. And then Major. how how is Jaheim for you after that game? Like, where's his headspace? So right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a little banged up right now. He feels a little better than he did the other day. You know, I think it was after like 20 plays or so he got he got knocked out. But uh, he feels I mean, he's feeling better now. He's still out of whack a little bit, but he he feels a little better right now. And you, just as a follow up, off of kind of what John was looking to there with a lot of C.J. Donaldson, there's been conversation the last couple of years that. He's a great back, but there's kind of a max of how many carries Brown would want to give him in a game. Yeah. What do you think he could handle if, that, if it has to be? As, as many as we can give him. Okay. I really do. As many as we can give him. Because he's a kid, uh, particularly now that the weather's changed, <laughs> he doesn't uh, done fatigue as fast. And uh, he can handle it. He gets stronger as the game goes along, does a phenomenal job staying in the game. And, and you know, he's done a great job with his body and his conditioning. And so. I think he can handle as many as we can, 20 plus carry. But if uh, Jaheim can't go, yeah, it's going to be a lot of him. Points of emphasis this week. What are you hammering home to your guys? For us, we got we to gotta do a great job. We got to take care of the ball. That's first and foremost. We got to take care of the football. Uh, the guys got to, we got to execute at a high level and just doing our job, just winning. We got to win a one on one battles. Got to win a one on one battles. We got to create expansion in the run game up front. We got to win a one-on-one -on -one battles at every uh, at every position, you know. O line to D line, receiver to DB, running back to linebacker and safety. And we just got to execute do our job. What's the pecking order now behind CJ and, and Jaheim? Who, uh, if you had to have a third or fourth, who would that who would that be? Jalen Anderson. Mm-hmm. Be, be the next guy that goes there, and then uh, Dior Hubbard. He's Dior Hubbard's coming along. Really well as, as well. He's done a phenomenal job. And all these Monday night footballs we have, he does a phenomenal job. Had an opportunity to put him in real late against Oklahoma State, and, you know, get him a taste of it. Did a good job recognition-wise the other day in the game and Saturday. Now, he didn't – his technique wasn't so great, but it was a phenomenal job just recognizing the blitz. So, those two would be the next two guys.
Well, yeah, a lot of people love to talk, but it's a, you know it's another thing when they listen. What is it about Jaque that has everybody listening? His consistency in the way he works, the way he carries himself, the way he goes about his business. I mean, he's a guy that's you know. He, He's here early, stays late. He does extra all the time. He goes over and beyond all the time. He's consistent in how he, his actions and his and his mood, his attitude is always the same every day. You know exactly what you're going to get out of him. And he does a phenomenal job, goes over and beyond in, in his uh, ability to do all that stuff. Jordan, about his guys, I'll ask you, through seven games, who's been the most consistent player, in your opinion, on offense? Traylon Davis. Traylon Davis. Without doubt. Traylon, Traylon Davis. What would what, what he be seeing from him that uh, made, makes you say that? He's almost about 100% on his execution and his assignments. He rarely misses blocks. He's always in, not just that he's uh, in position, he's moving guys. He's getting guys, he's getting guys to the ground. He's finishing at an elite level. And because of the little things he does, I mean, he's even put himself in position to catch a ball, and I think he has two explosive plays here in the last couple of weeks. And he's typically not a guy you look for to, you know, do anything explosive outside of blocking somebody. But uh, I mean, he's like the lunch pail guy. I mean, he's he's tough, he's physical, he's where he's supposed to be all the time, and his guy's never making a play. He's been the most consistent by far. Cole Taylor's had nine catches the past two weeks. Is that just? Byproduct him getting open, or is there something you all are Cole's doing? doing a great job of winning versus man coverage. We're getting a lot of it because they're stacking the box to stop the run, and so we're getting a lot of man coverage. He does a great job kept making contested catches as well with his length, but uh, and he's doing a great job breaking tackles. But uh, he's winning one on one. So if we could do uh, if we could do a better job of throwing the ball downfield, we'll get a lot more soft coverage and he'll win a lot more. But he's doing a great job of winning one on ones. at the end of the first half. The design on that, is the back supposed to stay in the flat or do you want him getting up field in the back? The very last play, right? Yes, yeah. He flushed it out. He needed to get all the way to the back of the end zone. He is the first read, but he was covered right away. And he got in the end zone. He needs to get to the back of the end zone so that ball could come to Cole Taylor, who was wide open. So CJ was the first read and he got covered. and. He got in the end zone, he should have went to the back of the end zone and completely cleared the way for Cole. And then Cole was the second option. There's been a lot of conversation about what players, leaders, et cetera, have said to kind of rally the troops. Mm -hmm. It's part of kind of, you know, your strong suit in, yeah. in oh, speeches yeah. and, and words of encouragement and things like that. So have you said anything to the group as a whole to just yeah. give you the offense? Yeah, we've got phenomenal, we got phenomenal uh, competitive carry on his offense, you know. So we've talked about, you know, with, with all those guys, just you know, we ain't going to set mediocrity. You know, ain't nobody going to throw in the towel. We're going to come to work and players, coaches alike, going to commit ourselves and go over and beyond to prepare better, practice better, game plan better, play better, and be better when we need to be. And that's on their play. And that's across the board. And the guys understand it was a phenomenal uh, – today today in terms of the focus, the attitude, and, and the energy, and, and the guys get it. So again, we got phenomenal competitive carry on the offense. So not saying not to cross on, on uh, defense as well, but just on side we're uh, I'm in control of. And so the guys going to commit themselves to, you know, preparing better, practicing better, playing better, and us as a staff doing a better job of game planning to help those guys be in position to go be successful. Thank you all. Thank you all.